John here guys and today we are talking about the latest budget camera to hit the scene the Foxeer Razor Ramon take a look at Razor Ramon I living the good life man now Razor Ramon was the charismatic ladies man of the WWF back in the 80s and Fox here has channeled his spirit into this budget camera. And much like Razor Ramon, it is packing quite a punch while giving you some exceptionally smooth images for your viewing pleasure and keeping an overall cheap sort of a quality compared to some of your more popular options such as a Hulk Hogan or Macho Man Randy Savage. Uh, many considered Razor Ramon to not quite be on par with Jake the Snake or the exceptionally awesome Rowdy Roddy Piper. But just because you're all out of bubble gum doesn't mean that you are the epitome of everything successful in FPV and in just in that way the fox here razor gives you an exceptionally cheap option this thing i've seen it as low as 15 dollars it's average about 17 dollars and finally they have come out with an option that is cheaper than the micro aero pro so how do they compare well i'm going to show you here is some footage of both of those cameras flying around the same playground this was kind of an overcast day so um, essentially these are ideal lighting uh, conditions for these cameras um, but it's a nice option, guys. Now, the other interesting thing about this thing is the resolution. Even though it is an exceptionally cheap budget camera, it has 1,200 TV lines. And it is also 4x3 and 16x9 switchable. Um, I have put this up in my favorite camera testing rig, the iFlight Nazgul, which I'm still flying. This thing's actually going to be on some significant sales during Black Friday, so be sure to check those out. Um, but it fits in there quite nicely. It has the small 1.8 lens, which I prefer on all of Fox Series products. Uh, if you remember initially on the Micro Aero Pro, they had like a really small, thin lens on there. And it wasn't as good. And then finally they came out with this regular size 1.8 lens. It's quite good. Um, the latency did not seem to be an issue at all. Uh, you know, even though this is like a CMOS camera, the size of it is basically identical to the Micro Aero Pro, so it doesn't have the lens sticking out very far like the, uh, like the Predator. It's more sunken in, so it has a very low profile. You can put it in a variety of builds for that reason. The camera connector on the back is the three with the little wall and then the two for the camera control thingy. So even though this camera came out roughly the same time as the Falcor 2, they both have different camera connectors. What the heck, Fox here? Why do you do this? What? Ugh. Anyway, uh, I found the camera image to be pretty similar to the Aero Pro, but the resolution um, boost was definitely a welcome improvement. Uh, if I had the choice to get either one of those, if you're just going to be flying around freestyle, I'd probably go with the Razer, guys. I mean, why? save a couple bucks, get the improved resolution. If you're going to be racing, you're probably going to be wanting something more like the Predator anyways. Um, so I won't even compare that. But for freestyle build, I think I'm going to go ahead and stock up on a couple more of these just to have them. Very impressive. Um, I'm not really sure how they were able to pack so much resolution in a camera so cheap uh what do you think guys i love love that overall and you know this nice goal that i'm using for my camera testing rig uh, from now on is it's a good example of this everything in fpv is getting cheaper the cameras the vtx's the motors like these eco motors they're such great quality for like 14 bucks um so compared to when i got in the hobby you could build a, a, a build for approximately the same price, but it was basically all dog shit components that would just 
fry on you and burst into flames. Now you can actually get really, really good quality for an exceptionally cheap price. And I love that. And the camera is one of the next steps in there. So no longer are you forced to spend $35, $40 on a super quality camera. You can actually get pretty decent quality, perhaps not the best. I have seen in some of the other reviews that this does not have the optimal light handling, um, but that's kind of a very specific thing. Most of the time, uh, you know, you're not going to be flying these in the dark, are you? And if you do, you're not going to expect the image to look that perfect anyway. So great option. Links in the description below. Thanks guys.